Hello, this is Christina, and today I will be telling you about a gripping historical fiction duology. The French Revolution duology by Sally Gardner is set in the French Revolution at the time of the Reign of Terror. It was a time of heartbreak and bloodshed over which Madame Guillotine ruled with fear. In the Red Necklace, a young gypsy named Yang, who is from the Circus of Follies, helps immigrants escape France in the shadow of the guillotine. Yannick falls in love with a beautiful girl named Sidoni, who is being pursued relentlessly by the horrific Count Kalavoski, who has sold himself to the devil. In order to help her escape France in the clutches of the Count, Yann must use his magic to race against time and prevailing evil, and the Count must face his inner demons in a son he never wanted. In, con in continuation of this endearing epic, The Silver Blade, the Count has returned and his inconceivable pursuit of Sido has once more surfaced. Thinking that Sido is safe in England, Yang continues with the saving of people under the shadow of Madame Gizzi. Known as the Silver Blade, Yang is being pursued by France's law, making every step perilous. When Sido is kidnapped, Yang must trust his instincts and face his father to save those he loves. All will come to a spectacular finish in the Silver Blade. The Reign of Terror was a period during the French Revolution when no one was safe. Anyone could be arrested with for the slightest offense, such as a word or gesture. Many people were convicted of crimes they did not commit, and there were great spectacles of blood and gore as the guillotine slaughtered as many as 45,000 people ruthlessly. Many nobles were fleeing as emigres, for the French government would often hunt them down to seize their riches by framing them with false accusations. Almost always, this cost the nobles their lives if they did not leave France in haste. Gypsies are a great theme of this duology, but where do they play into history? France's entertainment system, the Circus of Follies, was where many talented individuals acted and performed for many people. Often, the performers were gypsies, which have been in France since the Middle Ages. As the gypsies were common, they would not be likely to be suspect, suspected to be counter-revolutionaries. So they were able to influence many aspects of the revolution as this exciting duology implies. Gypsies were also commonly thought to have magic, which supposedly explained many strange happenings in history. Weaving magic into these strange tales added a fair and exciting touch to this pair of books. I will now read a passage from The Red Necklace. It was shortly after this that Madame Claremont disappeared. Her body was retrieved at low tide, half buried in the Thames mud near Cheyenne Walk, her little dog whining beside her. Henry Laxton accompanied Sir John Randall to identify the body. Madame Claremont was wearing a necklace that was caked in mud like the rest of her. A red garnet caught Mr. Laxton's eye. He took the necklace away from with him and washed it until its color was restored and studied it carefully. It was, as he had suspected, a necklace like those Charles Cordell had described to him, and the sight of it made him feel sick to his stomach. Madame Claremont had been a good client of the bank. What part, he wondered, had Kalabowski played in her murder? A terrible, undeniable truth struck him. This was the man Cito was to marry. How could he possibly stand by, knowing what he did, and let her be sacrificed to this monster? Something must be done before it was too late. And now, the silver blade. Kalavoski, looking out of his window at his artificial garden, was told of Anselm's failure. A pity. Cito leaves me no alternative, he said. Behind him stood the seven sisters, and... From one glass eye of each, a tear rolled without permission down their dead skin faces. So, said Kalamoski, there will be another to keep us company. He rose, and hauling on Baltazar's heavy chain, said to him, You may have the first and last taste of her innocent beauty. That is my gift to you. At Sido's chamber, Kalavoski removed his poppy red glove. From his skeleton fingertips, skeins of black threads hungrily searched out the lock in the iron door. At a signal from his master, Milk Eye opened the leather case containing Remy Quint's key. The 
dark threads seemed to devour it as they pushed it into the lock. The door opened. Kalavoski freed Balthazar from his spiked collar and let the ravenous hound in, swiftly closing the door behind him. Sido's scream filled the air as he walked away, his red heel boots clicking on the stone. He heard the howl of a hungry dog.